Why, hello there. Surely by now all of my fan jokes have been... exhausted? Corsair's SP RGB fans were a great option for people who wanted some soft glow in their cases, and the HD RGB fans, while providing a harsher light, also offered a larger array of effects. In my opinion, each fan had its place in a particular case. Either way, lots of people liked it, so Corsair put a ring on it. Corsair's third RGB fan model to hit the market and potentially blow their competition away is the Light Loop. There it is. The new cool kit on the block comes in 120 and 140mm variants, and Corsair sent me the smaller of the two for review. Both versions sport PWM control through the standard 4-pin fan header, where an outer diffusing ring housing 12 LEDs similar to what you'd see on the NZXT Air RGB fans, and 4 inner LEDs diffused by the white fan blades like their SP RGB predecessor, all within a black body, with the fan's intake on the side with the ring. Unlike its predecessors, which could be influenced with either software or a hardware switch, the only way to control lighting is with a Node Pro or a Commander Pro, and you can learn more about that in the card up top. A Node Pro and lighting hub is included with the 120mm triple pack and the 140mm twin pack, but not with the single fans. There are no LED strips included with the packages. To get your light show on the road, connect the Node Pro to the motherboard's internal USB 2.0 header and to SATA power. Plug the lighting hub into one of the Node Pro LED headers, and then plug the fan's RGB LED cables, those are the thinner ones, into the hub, starting at the port labeled 1. Ports must be filled in order. For example, if you're connecting three fans, ports 1, 2, and 3 must be occupied. Skipping a port will result in all fans following after the break to stay boring and unlit AF. That being said, the order on the hub is also what dictates the order for any sequential effects. Once all hardware is in, head over to Corsair's downloads page and utilize their super handy search bar. Find, download, and install the latest version of Corsair Link. Go to your devices and make sure your Node Pro is updated to the latest firmware. Click on the Configure button in the Lighting Node Pro's tile and you'll be brought to a page of enlightenment. Click on the drop-down to select your RGB component, the LL fan in this literal case. Then click on the plus button to add more, equivalent to the amount of fans you've installed on that channel. Clicking on one of the fans will allow you to adjust the effects. You have access to Rainbow Wave, fairly self-explanatory. Rainbow, also pretty straightforward, or at least about as straightforward as a ring can get. Color Shift, which changes randomly or between two colors of your choosing. Color Pulse, offering the same parameters. Color Wave, same, but different. Static, the most boring, yet probably most fundamental. Temperature, allowing your LEDs to visually represent the temperature of a component or sensor of your choice. Visor, a nice effect for a rainy day. Marquee, I kind of miss MySpace. Blink, an effect I personally think no one should use, but to each his own. Sequential, an effect where connection order matters. Arc, a new addition that I think looks totally tubular. Heartbeat, because RGB is love. And finally, let us play Pong, another super cool channel-based effect where sequence as well as fan orientation makes a difference. If Corsair could implement a direction per fan option here, that'd be swell. After you've settled on something you like, you can proceed to fine-tune your components one at a time or copy the current effects over to other similar devices. After lighting up, if you've connected the fan cables into a Commander Pro, we can move over to the Configure tab up top and tweak fan curves to avoid getting baked. Click on one of your fans and select a preset or create your own. You can check out the Commander Pro video I mentioned earlier for a more in-depth explanation of this. And at this point, you're probably wondering which fans blow the most, suck the hardest, do good. But don't worry, I'm here to keep you in the loop. I did another video a little while ago that you can find in the card up top comparing all of the RGB fans I had on hand. If you're a spec head, Here's a chart with all the relevant technical figures pulled straight from each fan's respective stat page. Do note that my testing is done in my bedroom where my climate control is pretty much limited to my janky ass air conditioner, so these numbers should give you a general idea, but also shouldn't really be taken as absolute truth. Recycling my old but still relevant data, we'll be performing the test in the same manner for the light loop fans. They'll be spinning at max speed and push configuration on the Deepcool Captain 240EX AIO cooler mounted on an i7-5820K clocked to 4GHz at 1.3V inside the Corsair Crystal 570X case with no exhaust fans. The test will be Prime 95 run for 2 hours, one to get the temperatures to stabilize and a second to collect our averages. The test will be repeated 2 times after that for our final averaged figures. 
Based on that testing methodology and normalizing for an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, the Corsair Light Loop fans bring the CPU to 77.03 degrees, which tells me these are probably not best suited for radiator use. The next test is just for pushing air. Two of the fans will be mounted as front intake, again spinning at max speed to cool a Xeon E5 2690V3 processor at stock clock and 1.3 volts, again brutalized by Prime95. We'll be including Zotac's GTX 980 Ti Amp Extreme graphics card being bullied by a Firmark stress test, since there's no radiator impeding airflow this time around. We'll have the GPU clock locked at 1415 MHz with the memory staying at stock and the fan set to a static 1500 RPM. Since air coolers stabilize much more quickly than water coolers, this test will only be done for one hour, half an hour to ensure stabilization and the second half to collect the averages. Again, repeated two times afterwards for the sake of being thorough. This time around, they do better at 74.67 and 66 degrees Celsius for CPU and GPU respectively, but not better than Corsair's initial offerings, albeit by a small margin. In terms of sound... So that sounds good and all, but what's the catch? Your wallet. After checking these prices, the light loop fans seem much heavier. The LL120 RGB fans start at $35 US dollars for a single and $120 US dollars for the triple pack. The LL140 RGB fans start at $40 US dollars for the singles and $100 for the twin pack. But do remember that the triple and twin packages include a Note Pro, but not the LED strips. I'm not sure if Corsair intends to offer more combinations in the future, but I can more or less agree with these initial options. Not necessarily the price. Many cases support three 120s or two 140s in the front or top, and buying a single RGB fan is kind of like settling for a single loop scoop of rainbow sherbet ice cream. You aren't truly alive. So you start with either a triple 120 pack or a twin 140 pack and add on singles as you see fit. As for the pricing, it may seem high, partially because I think it kind of is, especially considering these fans aren't really better than Corsair's other already competent RGB options. The Light Loop fans come at a $5 premium over their HD counterparts, which can add up pretty quickly if you intend on filling your case to the brim with RGB. Though, I will note that if you really like how these look and you want to invest in the whole Corsair RGB ecosystem, Corsair does offer RGB expansion strips for $40. That means buying the Triple 120 pack and extra LED strips will be about $5 cheaper than buying three individual fans and a Note Pro. The LL140s end up being the same price though. That being said, it's hard to say whether or not the price is actually justified. I'm sure some people will happily sell their organs on the black market for a not black build, but at the same time, there will probably be more people focused around performance, in which case the cooler, cheaper HD fans would be the better option. Though, to the Light Loop's credit, they are much quieter. So that could be an important factor as well. Personally, I probably wouldn't be able to justify buying these for myself, but man, do they look good in certain cases. The lighting is vibrant, and while the effects don't appear to be as smooth as the HD fans at lower speeds, they're still pretty buttery. Hot spotting is very minimal, and due to the white blades and the LEDs within, you do get some lighting spilling out behind the fan, which is good for some interior case illumination if you have these set to intake. But on the not so bright side, I would have definitely appreciated the ring on the exhaust end as well, because more options is more better. If you choose to rock a top intake for example, it'd be nice to see the ring on the inside. But aside from that, and the fact that cable management is going to be a pain in the posterior, I don't have much else to complain about. Otherwise, these fans would look really cool with, let's say, audio syncing. Corsair. And so that's all I have to say about that. Let me know what you think about these Fruit Loops. I'd love to know whether or not the aesthetic is worth the price in your opinion. Like, dislike, comment, subscribe, share, leave me questions if you've got them. Thanks for watching. My name is Steven and I am a little dim. Bye bye. Why, hello there. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, that doesn't flow as well as I was hoping it would. Surely by now all of my fan jokes have been exhausted. That felt forced. That was kind of forced. Loop. There it is. I wonder if anybody's gonna get that. The only way to control lighting with it is with it. Mm, yeah. A Note Pro and a lighting. Uh, 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 the only way to control lighting is with a Note Pro or a Commander Pro. And you can. <laughs> <laughs> and you can learn more about that in the card up top. A lighting node pro and a hub is not what I wrote, but not with the single fans. Thank you. I forgot to silence that. 
That's my fault. That being said, the order on the hub is also what dictates the dic dic dictates. The order on the hub is also what dic 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 it's such a weird word to say all of a sudden. The order on the hub is also what dictate di also what dic di also what dic di dictates also what dic dictates i7 5820k clocked to 4 gigahertz at 1.3 volts inside the course of <laughs> as for pricing it may seem high partially because i think it kind of is but it's been bit <laughs> i'm sure some people will happily sell their organs on the black market for a set of these but at the same time there will probably be i had a thought it's in development hold on at the same time there will probably be you do get some light spilling out behind the fan, which is good for some, and oh, that was awkward. 